I have an article here that I've got out of an um, online newspaper that I like to read. It's called Coinka High Life. I think you folks have probably heard me talk about it before. And I get updates from it. I get a, an email every day with the top news of Coinka High Life. And there's an, an article that was just published this week on the 28th this past week, can you be too old, too sick, or too disabled to be an expat? When is it time to go home? So we're going to talk about this when I come back. Hey! Hello there. This article is written by a gentleman named Richard Engel. I uh, believe he lives, and I've heard of this guy before, I believe he lives in Cuenca. He is a retired research psychologist and psychiatric counselor who's been a full-time, part-time resident in Cuenca since 2006, so he's been here a while. And this this is a good article, and I'm going to read most of it to you as quick as I can. Bear with me, stay with me, because I think this is something important for everybody to think about. Uh, particularly those of you who are in the same age group as me, I'm 70 years old, you know, and when we start thinking about, you know, where are we going to die, I mean, do we, as an expat, you know, is there anything wrong with me wanting to die here in Ecuador, or do I need to go back home, back to the United States? Saying back home is a be a controversial subject around here depending on who you're talking to. I ran into a, a lady, well actually I ran into my first Karen here who used to, God what an old hag this woman is. I used to have to sit and listen to her blab her mouth and about her and she thought she had a monopoly on knowledge about being an expat and, and anytime I ever said anything about home she'd go where I'd say home back home you know back home she then she'd go off on a big lecture about where home is home is here this is home you know blah 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 the old bag I, I wish that old hag would just go somewhere else you know there are Karens here folks okay back to this article here sorry about that uh, but anyway Richard wrote here two weeks ago a talk radio show host read a Cuenca Citizen Guard report about an incident regarding a foreign resident in Parque Calderon. That's the really nice park that's right in front of the Blue Domes in Cuenca. The guard noticed an elderly man who had been holding on to the wrought iron fence surrounding the Abdon Calderon statue for, I probably mispronounced that, so somebody can, I'm sure Karen or Ken will bring up something about that. Unusually, this guy had been hanging around his statue, hanging onto this rail for an extended period of time. When she asked in English if he was okay, the man told her that he was too weak to walk to the street to get a taxi. The guard, who believed the man had suffered a stroke, called for assistance, and the man was helped to the curb where he was placed in a taxi. She called ahead to the man's condominium on Avenue Avenida. Ordinez Lasso to explain or to arrange assistance when he arrived. Also recently an acquaintance who manages rentals for foreign residents told me about a tenant, an 80 year old woman from New York who complained that she was being spied on by, uh, spied on and that the room above her apartment was filled with electronic surveillance equipment. When he explained that there was only a small crawl space above her. She accused him and other residents in the building of being part of a plot. In another case, an elderly couple who live on a combined monthly pension of less than $700 a month told their next door neighbor that they were no longer able to, to leave their El Central apartment. The man in his mid-80s is recovering from a heart attack, while his wife, who is in the early stages of Alzheimer's disease, uses a walker. The neighbor agreed to buy their groceries and other supplies which include seven bottles of vodka a week. Man, 
80 years old and drinking seven bottles of vodka a week, I think I'll go back to drinking vodka. I didn't think I could drink that much vodka and live to be that old. He might be onto something here. When the neighbor sat down with the couple to suggest they consider moving in with her daughter back in the U.S., she had offered the option, the daughter offered the option several occasions, but they told, they told him they, were, they had no plans to leave and believe their daughter is, out, is after their money. Maybe she wants her vodka. But anyway, when I hear of situations like these or simply observe the difficulty that some of my aging expat friends have been getting around, I'm prompted to ask, is there a time when you should stop being an expat? Is there a time to go home? That's the big question here. And when I consider the question of giving up expat life, I'm not talking about those with strong support networks, no matter how, no matter their disability. If someone has an able-bodied and able-minded spouse or close friend to help out, more power to them. My question regards those without that support network. Kind of like me. I don't have a spouse to watch over me. Something happens to me, you know. Uh, he said, my question regards those without a support network who live alone or with a partner who is also in declining health. Unfortunately, I see many such situations. He went on to say, in Ecuador, or any other country in Latin America for that matter, it's not a good place for the physically and mentally disabled. There are simply too many obstacles, too many rough sidewalks, too many careless drivers, and these are only the mobility issues. There are the equally daunting obstacles of language, in culture and navigating bureaucracies that often make no sense even to Ecuadorians. Often, too often, sadly, I find that many unhealthy expats are not here for the adventure but for the lower cost of living and sometimes to escape their families back home. One man who I recently helped down the stairs at an El Virgel shopping center told me, quite frankly, that he came to Cuenca to die and didn't want to be a burden to his children. When I asked if the children were aware of his plan, he said no. Last paragraph here. As long as the Ecuadorian government does not require physical or psychological testing for residency, and some countries are beginning to add such requirements to, for new foreign residents, all comers are legally welcome here. Ultimately, the question of the appropriateness of the move out of one's home country or of remaining in a country, one located to at an earlier age, is up to the individual. Sadly, I am afraid that the issue is often not given the consideration it deserves in many cases. After I read that article, I, I, I always like to read what comments people leave, and there was one that really stuck out to me. This one guy, said, or this lady said, so you die here or you die there, you know? I'm going to do a video next week. I hope I get it done next week. I haven't confirmed it yet, but I'm going to do a video with Marcos at Equisys, my friend Marcos, and we're going to talk about end-of-life documentation and preparation for end-of-life uh, for people living here in Ecuador. Um, on top of and after that video, I'm actually going to do a video with a a gentleman that works at a crematorium and we're, I'm actually going to do this interview at the crematorium uh, provided that they don't really actually have a customer there at the time because we don't want to be filming them cremating a, a uh, I, want, I started to say a live body but obviously that won't be the case but uh, you, you, you choose where you want to live or die. I mean, I, I, I don't know why I would go back to the United States to die. But, but I don't really care where I die. What I care about is how I want to be treated and how I want to live my life until that moment when I do die. You know, here in Ecuador, you can have full-time live-in, live-in or not live-in, assistance to help you with your day-to-day -day living activities, you know, for just pennies on the dollar, three, four, five hundred dollars a month. You know, it costs thousands of dollars to stay in a long-term care facility in Mesa, Arizona. It's five, six, seven thousand dollars a month. 
or whatever they can get out of you. But, you know, is there time to stop being an expat? I'm, I'm going to say no. I'm, I, you're an expat. An expat is an expat is an expat. And whether you die in this country or in any other country, it shouldn't make any difference to anybody. Somebody else wrote, in the larger sense, we are all tourists here, and home, in quotes, is where or what is that exact... Well, let me start over again. In the larger sense, we are all tourists here, and home, where or what is that exactly? The U.S. is home to the young and ambitious. Children and old people are not part of the menu, the social safety net. Ha, ha, ha. I, I, I still think that, to me... I, I don't care where I die as long as I'm comfortable living where I'm living when I do die. Another person wrote, when you hit 80, go back to the U.S. or wherever you came from, unless you can afford a helper or have a younger supportive spouse who will sit you. The old expression, you don't hit 80, 80 hits you, is very true. If you can't handle 80, go home. You'll only be a burden on Ecuador's social system. I don't agree with that. If you if you have if you have an income and you can employ an Ecuadorian to help take care of you, where the hell is the burden on the Ecuadorian social system? If you have insurance, I mean I granted I'm sure there will be some expats here that might be a drain on the economic social system here in Ecuador, but I know speaking for myself I'll have Social Security until the day I die. I'll always have my investment income until the day I die. I'll always be able to afford to have pay somebody to help me out. Another guy wrote, Cuenca is a known place to all of us, but the U.S. could be any number of places, most of which are a car is king lifestyle, which would, I don't even know what that means, which would be even more appropriate for the kind of person described here. Great article, but I think it boils down to exactly... We're in the U.S. that a comparison to Cuenca's lifestyle is being made. Yeah, that's true. I mean, if, hell, if you had to go back to Houston, Texas, <clears throat> pardon me, if you had to go back to Houston, Texas and live in that hell hole where there's so many crazy people around, if I was going to be forced to go back to the U.S., I'd rather go back to a small town somewhere. But then again, if I'm going to die, I'd rather just die right here. Anyway, you know, that's all I'm reading on comments. But I, but I, like, I like the one from Frederica said, so you die here or you die there. So where you choose to live your life and die is, is strictly your business, folks. Don't let anybody try to tell you that you have to go back home. There's excellent health care right here in Ecuador. There are people here that will come and take care of you on a daily basis for 400 bucks a month. They'll be happy to do it. You know, they go do your shopping for you. They, you know, I'm speaking about here in Ecuador, right here. You know, they'll go do your shopping for you. They'll run errands for you. They'll go pay your light bill. You know, they'll do whatever they can to help you make your life comfortable. That's what I'm going to do. You know, I'm going to, you know, when I get to that point where I can't take care of myself, I hope I don't. I hope I just die peacefully in my sleep, to tell you the truth. But if I'm going to be fortunate enough to, to live to a natural death, you know, die of natural causes, I hope that I do have somebody that can help me, and I'll be happy to pay for it, you know, and I'm not going to go back to the United States to die. Feel free to die here, folks. Okay? So, on that happy note, I'd like to say thank you for watching my channel. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, Come down here, and I'm going to take you up to the Pacochi Rainforest. I'm going to show you a tree there that you can climb, okay? And when you get up to the, I'll, I'll show you the limb. It's about 40 feet up. You'll, you'll have the privilege of being able to climb out on that limb and then jump, okay? That's what, those of you that don't like my video, that's, that's what you can do. Come down here and go climb a tree and jump out of it, all right? You'll be a happier person. <laughs> ciao, ciao for now. See you on the next one.
Some people have said in here, oh, we can't be talking, why, why, how dare we talk about the US? Well, we talk about everybody else. Is the US a functioning democracy? Well, let's have a look at it. It costs two billion to become president. They're 25% of the total prisoners in the world. They spend over 800 billion a year on arms, which is uh, more than most of the world put together. They've been at war for 250 years since their state was formed 275 years ago. But they can't afford universal health care. They can't afford the 1.7 trillion debt forgiveness for students. They can't afford a program for the 17 million children that go to bed hungry. Is this a functioning democracy? What's your idea of a democracy? The Americans couldn't spell democracy. We're never done talking about China. We talk about Syria, Iraq. We talk about Venezuela and Nicaragua. We talk about everybody. This idea, what is democracy anyway? Is, is it having a vote every four, four or five years? No, it's not. It's, having, it's your people having a say in the society they live in. And most of the American people have no say in the society they're living in. They're the country is run by oligarchs. They're run by big business. Oil, coal, big pharma and the arms industry run the place. They elect the president and it, it costs them two billion to get into the place and, and, he, and he serves them when he does. They haven't got democracy.